Hi, good morning guys. This is the immunology revision for this semester. I can't go through all the chapters, so I decided to do revision on some important topics in this presentation. So first, I'd like to start with MAC class 1 and class 2 molecules. These slides are from lecture 23 cell-mediated specific immunity to lecture. Here are some main points. MAC class 1 is the heterodimer and it is expressed in all cells in our body except red blood cells. It is composed of two polypeptide chain, alpha and beta. Again, alpha chain has three domains, alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. Look at the diagram carefully. Only alpha 3 domain has transmembrane region, and it interacts with CD8 receptor of T cells. Alpha 1 and alpha 2 domains join together and present antigens to TCR, but TCR is not shown in this diagram. When our body cells are infected with virus or intracellular pathogen, the cell processes the virus and present antigen to CD8 cytotoxic T cells through MAC class 1. Then CD8 cell recognize the virus-infected cell through T-cell receptor and vi kills the virus-infected cell. So both virus and virus-infected cells are killed. There are three genes that encode for alpha chain of MAC class 1. These are HLA-A, HLA-B, and HLA-C genes. All of these are located on chromosome 6. Please remember beta 2 macroglobulin or B2M gene is located on chromosome 15. Now let's move on to MAC class 2. It is also a heterodimer and is, it is expressed only in APC or antigen presenting cells like dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells. It is composed of two polypeptide chains, alpha and beta. Each chain has two dimers, alpha 1, alpha 2, and beta 1, beta 2. Alpha 2 and beta 2 domains have transmembrane region or transmembrane domain. Alpha 2 and alpha 1, sorry, alpha 1 and beta 1 present antigens to T cell receptor, which is not shown in this diagram. Here, what you need to note is MSC class 2 always interacts with CD4 co receptor molecule. So you can remember like this. 1 to 8 and 2 to 4. 1 to 8 stands for MAC class 1 interacts with CD8 and 1 to 2 to 4 stands for MAC class 2 interacts with CD4. There are three genes that encode for MAC class 2. They are HLA-DP, HLA-DQ and HLA-DR. All, all these genes are located on chromosome 6. This slide shows you the location of HLA genes on chromosome 6. Here you can see on the right, HLA, A, B, and C genes are located on the chromosome 6. On the left of the diagram, HLA, DP, DQ, and DR are located on the chromosome 6. Similarly, now let's move on and see how peptides are processed in a cell's 
and present through MSE class 1. The first and important point here you need to remember is that peptides bind to MSE class 1 in the endoplasmic reticulum. This is the endoplasmic reticulum. In this process, antigens or viral protein is synthesized in the cytoplasm. Then protein is cleaved to peptides by proteasomes. Peptides are transported to endoplasmic reticulum through TAP or trans transporter associated with antigen processing protein. Then peptides of the appropriate length binds MAC class 1 molecule in the cytoplasmic reticulum and this MAC peptide complex is transported to cell surface. Okay, let's see how antigen is processed for MAC class 2. In this case, antigen is engulfed or phagocytose by dendritic cells. Then protein is cleaved to peptides by acid activated proteases. At the same time, MAC class 2 molecule is formed in endoplasmic reticulum and these are transported in the vesicles like here. Vesicles with peptides here are fused with vesicles containing MAC class 2 molecules. So MAC class 2 molecules bind peptide fragments here, then catalyzed by HLA-DM. Finally, HLA peptide complex are transported to cell surface. Okay, let's move on to another important molecule that is the antibody and B cell receptor. These slides are from lecture 19 that is cell biology of immune response. This slide shows you the two molecules antibody on the right and BCR or B cell receptor on the left. Just focus on antibody molecule first. It is composed of two types of polypeptide chains, heavy chain and light chain. Heavy chain is shown in green color and light chain is shown in yellow color. So total number of peptide chain in one antibody molecule is four, two heavy chain and two light chain. You need to remember the different names in each chain. Each chain is composed of two domains or two regions. In heavy chain, you will see variable region of heavy chain or VH and heavy chain constant region or CH. In light chain, you can see variable region of light chain and constant region of light chain. Now you can have a look at the B cell receptor. The main difference between antibody and B cell receptor is that BCR has transmembrane region. So BCR is always present on the surface of B cells, whereas antibody molecules are secreted from B cells and they are circulating in your blood or in your tissue fluid. Another important molecule you need to know is TCR or T cell receptor. Now, TCR is shown in the middle diagram in the middle. The main function of TCR is to recognize the fragments of antigen which is presented by MAC. For example, TCR of CD4 T cells recognize antigen presented by MAC class 2 from dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells. Similarly, TCR of CD8 T cells recognize antigen presented by MAC class 1 of virus infected cells. That's the main difference. 
Now, please note a bit of confusing terms. TCR recognizes antigen, but not that TCR binds antigen. Whereas antibody and BCR are able to bind antigens. Right, now look at the structure. TCR is composed of two polypeptide chains, alpha and beta. Each alpha and beta chain has variable region and constant region. And TCR has transmembrane domain. TCR is always expressed with CD3 molecules, which is shown in the left extreme diagram. CD3 molecules are here. Two diagrams on the right here shows you the structural similarity of antibody and TCR. This is antibody and this is TCR. When you look carefully, the FAB fragments here, FAB fragment of antibody is very similar to TCR. But TCR is always expressed on the surface of T cells and they are not freely moving molecules like antibodies. Okay, let's move on to another important topic like complement system. As you all know, the complement system is the one of the innate immune response against pathogens. It has three pathways, lectin, classical, and alternative pathways. Here too, you need to remember is what initiates these pathways. Look at the lectin pathway first. It can be initiated by two molecules, ficolin and MBA, MBL or mannose binding lectin. Classical pathway can be initiated by C1 molecule or C1 molecule binds to antibody molecule which is already capture an antigen on the bacterial surface. Alternative pathway is initiated by C3 complement protein, which binds on the surface of bacteria. And C3 complement protein binds another complement protein called factor B. You can see here in yellow color. Again, B molecule is cleave by factor D, here shown in red color. Finally, another complement regulatory protein called factor P or propadin stabilize C3B BB molecule. And this is an important point that regulator protein P and how it works. The last topic I'd like to point out is the lecture 22, Cell Mediated Specific Immunity 1. Here I'd like to point out a few things. There are two types of affected T cells once T cells are activated. CD4 positive affected T cells, which are also called T helper cells, and CD8 positive affected T cells which is also called cytotoxic T cells. Five types of CD4 positive affected T cells can be found. Th1, Th2, Th17, Tfh, and Tred cells. The main function of Th1 here is to activate macrophages through its cytokines to kill intracellular pathogen which are already phagocytosed by macrophages. How about TH2? These cells are there to kill extracellular pathogens including parasites via production of cytokines. TH17 also kills extracellular bacteria and fungi. TFH 
This, the main function of DFH is rather than killing a pathogen, it helps in two important mechanisms of T cell metabolism. These are called class switching and somatic hypermutation. The last is cell, T rex cells are there for mainly for regulation of other CD4 T cells. So just look at a bit detail of Th1. The immune response caused by Th1 is called type 1 response. And Th cells, Th1 cells, secretes enter from gamma, interleukin 2, interleukin 10, and TNF alpha to activate macrophages. That is to kill intracellular pathogens including viruses. In type 2, Th2 response, Th2 response is caused by, type 2 response is caused by Th2 cells. In this response, Th2 cells secrete interleukins like interleukin 4, interleukin 5, and interleukin 13 to kill extracellular pathogens including parasites. All right, guys, it helps for your revision on immunology. Good luck, guys. Thank you.